So someone just please confirm that you can hear me because we're running a little late because I had every audio visual issue. Like I've been doing this long enough that I shouldn't have had all the AV issues. I just, how? Well, I like somehow my computer kept being like, you don't have a camera. You don't. Thank you, Russell. Hey, Russell, I haven't seen you in ages. How the, how the fuck are you? Um, yeah, it's been free back rub by Pedro Pascal. It's if I could offer that, I would have a much better attended live stream every every time. Every time. What it's look at the lipstick. Hold on a second. Let me look at the lipstick. Look at the science dog. Oh, oh he's so cute. The lipstick is science dog approved and resistant. Look at look at that. Not not a dot. Okay, maybe maybe a dot, but you know, it takes this this stuff takes work to get off. Uh, I think this one's Maybelline. Hold on. Let me just oh because i know what my audience wants makeup and science now this was a uh it, this this hold on a second yes it's a maybelline uh superstay matte ink um can hear you good uh busy learning about eller stanlos the hard way otherwise go oh we can but we can we can get to we can get to that we seem to have a whole community of zebras in here um so yeah, maybe I was born with it. I was born with EDS. I was not born uh, with lips quite this red or hair quite this curly. Uh, so it's been it's been an interesting. I guess my face is just changing again. I'm going through sixth puberty at this point. I, I there was a video a long time ago by uh, by our all of our internet mothers, uh, all of our all of our internet mother. Um, yeah, just mother singular. Uh, um jenna marbles uh where she talked about uh second puberty where you know you go through puberty and, you're, and you think you're done you think you hit your uh your final form hey j stripe um it's how's it going in new york oh wait it's a it's 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 a listen, did i lose more weight did I, no it's i've been about the same weight for a while there's nothing left to lose i will start looking terrifying if i lose more weight uh it's or you know that that's what you know that's what happens in Hollywood. People go through the chisel, but I, I appreciate it. But no, it's just last time you saw me, I was moving and I was exhausted. Now it's just I have more hair and I'm wearing makeup and I appreciate it. But no, it's there's there's nothing left to go. There's like we're we're carved out to the we're down to minimum here. Um, but I appreciate the compliment. Uh, uh, where where was I before? I so really interrupted myself. Um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 um, how is it that I've already managed to lose track of where I was? Uh, it's it's clearly we're we're back to old habits here, kids. Um, let's see. I was on Eller Stanlos. I got in. Uh, I managed to get disrupted, or I managed to get distracted by myself. Um, wait, Eller Stanlos the hard way. Um, things are changing. Uh, I'm just gonna keep rambling until I figure out uh, where I will. Oh yeah, uh, every single AV issue uh, possible. Somehow my computer. Uh, and we're having some internet connection issues, as I mentioned the other day. And I don't know if it's like when plugging in my uh, my microphone and my uh, like right now we're running on the computer's uh, microphone and built in uh, um, uh, camera. And it works. This computer, it's a, a pretty new computer. Uh, thank you, Sai Mom. Um, and it's it's got a good. Uh, it's got a decent camera and a good, you know, a decent built-in mic, but like I'm used to running, you know, a slightly tighter shop than that. So having like, I'm like, I'm going to plug it in. It's going to, everything's going to run. It took me a little while to find all my cords because I just tucked them away when, when uh, we moved me. Uh, it's just 
quick uh, quick thank you uh, to um, we'll get to that in a second, Akiko. Quick thank you to Akiko uh, and and uh, Joe. Uh, uh, a couple of of our our denizens here in Cybertopia for helping for for uh, for helping me move. Uh, last month it was it was quite the arduous journey. Uh, by the way, um, it's it's hello it's hello in the Twitchverse. I, I and I appreciate y'all coming uh, y'all showing up for me uh, too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I started you know just plugging in you know it's my usual set of things into here and I'm like okay this will be this will be fine. Right? No reason why. What as soon as I plug in you know my having issues with internet, plug in. Don't be nervous. Just picture us all naked. Michael, I'm already picturing you naked. I like it. Anyways, um, plug everything in, fire up restream, and then and then uh restream is like we're not we you don't have a cam we know you we see that you have a camera plugged in. It's not working. I'm like, what? you know, click click on it's click troubleshoot troubleshoots like we're gonna we're gonna go it's we're we're not going to anything native to your computer we have to go connect to the internet to troubleshoot it thinks for whatever reason it's like you're not connected to the internet i'm like but i most certainly am mother ah! so like round three rounds in a row of this and like I, it's i've had a lot of issues over the years with restream or not like i want to be clear I haven't the it's not restream that's the problem it's you know just you re, every single platform has some sort of issue uh and you know I've I've encountered them because that's what happens when you're plugging in something that needs another driver or has one thing discombobulate <laughs> I'd never seen this series of errors of any time you plug in your shit your computer's like we just you don't have it it's not there so my apologies for the late start. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, here, here we are. Um, and Akiko just asked, have you seen Painkiller on Netflix, the OxyContin uh, docudrama? And I did. Uh, and it was, I, I was, uh, you know, it, it was, I feel like, you know, every few months for a while, we're going to have like, like there was the, uh, the Michael Keaton uh, one that came out a, a while ago. That one was pretty good. This one, same thing. And I really liked that it was told uh, through the point of view of, uh, of the, one of the investigators who was like, you know, going, you know, talk, like kind of stumbled on <laughs> how big of a problem it was and stumbled on it. Like after it was uh, such a huge issue, because it feels like that's how uh, the Oxycontin issue really played out was that nobody knew about it. And then suddenly we were in a fucking heroin epidemic or, you know, so to speak. Uh, oh yeah. Dope sick. That was the name of it. Thank you. Um, but it's, um, I think people don't uh, like people don't really realize how uh, closely related all of these drugs are, because if you see, uh, um, I think with the exception of uh, oddly enough, uh, on the very, very extreme ends of um, of the opiate or uh, or opiate esque uh, drugs um, are uh, the you didn't know people snorted it. People will get that into their system a lot of different ways, uh, but on the very different uh, opposite ends of um, of strengths for opiates are uh, are the synthetic ones, right? So you've got uh, like in you've you've got tramadol and fentanyl on the very like so far over. You guys can't see how far my hands are pointing, but tramadol, one of the weakest of the you know of the drugs that we kind of it sort of kind of works like an opiate, but it also kind of sort of works like a uh, like an SSRI, like one of the metabolites is an SSRI, but that's another story for another day. Uh, but on the other opposite end, completely far opposite end, uh, is fentanyl, and those are both fully synthetic. Now, if you look at the molecules for those, uh, they don't look a, a fucking thing. Uh, it's, I don't know about that for Imodium. We'll get to that. I'd, I'd have to have a look at it. Um, but if you, um, it's, thank you for, for that question. I'm going to have a peek into that, um, uh, Harley. Uh, but it's, uh, but uh, the thing with uh, these two, the reason why they work like opiates, like and the, there's no like, it's not like there's a, a, a spot in the body that's like, oh, I need this molecule or it's we're not going to no shit's going to happen. It just needs some molecule. It needs a round peg to fit in a round hole. 
<laughs> hole. Uh, it needs to, you know, you need something that's going to trigger that little uh, reflex in your body. That's going to make, you know, it's going to, it's going to make the hamster jump on the wheel and give you that thing. Uh, and th in the case of, of opiates, it's not like we call them opiate receptors, but really they're your body's uh, endogenous endorphin receptors. So you have endogenous meaning, you know, built in, so to speak, uh, that might not be the exact translation, but um, endogenous meaning the shit that you've got already in your body, uh, endorphin receptors, basically um, opiates are, are just pinging your body's endorphin receptors. And endorphins, um, if you remember that scene uh, in, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, in uh, uh, um, Legally Blonde, endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't kill their husbands just don't uh but it's they're not just you know a happy chemical like if you've ever been sewing and you've accidentally pricked your uh, finger please don't try this out uh just to see if you can get a response out of it but i've noticed when i've been sewing whatever if i've accidentally you know stuck myself it's like ah oof and all of a sudden you can almost feel your body releasing a little bit of it. like it's it's like it can be it's almost like you can get it triggered uh like you can get a release of these endorphins a very tiny one very quickly subtly uh, triggered by something that causes a little bit of acute pain. Uh, and there's this short burst of a high that comes with it. Uh, but you know, it's, it's short lasting, uh, with something like that. Now, the thing with endorphins as opposed to opiates endorphins, because they're built, you know, they're, your body made them specifically to attach onto these receptors. They're going to attach on stronger than opiates would, but they don't last a long time. Your body, unless you're in shock, unless you're, uh, super, super, uh, in, you know, unless, unless you're in an extended period of horrible pain and what, you know, you're not going to get the kind of high that you get from opiate and opiates. And it's because, uh, it's, oh, is that why you're into, I, I, I uh, give me, I, I'm, I'm not sure what you're, is that why you're into pain? I'm not sure if, uh, if that's, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, Akiko, um, if you could elaborate more. Um, but that's the thing is that, um, endorphins uh you know endorphins are there to not just make you happy but they uh you know they they fight a bit of pain there's something your body naturally releases for that uh and opiates it's not that they're stronger than your body's natural built-in system it's that you're flooding your body with it uh so oh yeah that's endorphin rush that's a that's a you know saying that i'm into pain because it's an endorphin rush would i've said for a long time if you're a masochist take up distance running you're welcome anyways uh i survived a couple of marathons with a torn labrum for a reason it, it's it just just throwing it out there don't don't do what i did it was a anyway uh so yeah it's uh so that's the big difference like endorphins stronger opiates fuckloads of them so the big thing so like i said tramadol uh and uh, fentanyl both of them fully synthetic if you looked at the molecules they don't look like any things that we uh think of i just i think i just learned something about masoch masochism would be the uh the word you're looking for um hard to maintain that balance if you enjoy the run that much look i i always enjoyed the run for a reason uh running is always about look it depends on why you're running like running if you're being chased by something you might be able to outrun not a bad idea running if you know you're not going to be able to outrun it just just see what it's like to be eaten alive just just go for it like if it's a big thing that's gonna just why get out of bed why get out of breath why why if it's your last move in life just let the vulture eat you let the vulture eat you. anyways uh so we've, uh, we've covered tramadol super weak fentanyl super strong both fully synthetic now there are the opiates that are not synthetic at all those are the ones that come we think of opiates uh coming from the opium poppy uh those are your those are just morphine and codeine now there are a couple other ones in there there's one called the uh it's the bane t-h-e-b-a-i-n-e -E, all one word uh and it's not pharmacologically active it's got this one weird uh as we call it in uh organic chemistry this one weird r group it's oh sh no oh sorry my my computer just made a my computer just flashed at me like it was like ah we're gonna we're gonna take a nap now bye and i'm like no i don't i don't have it um uh the bane is i'm not sure if you're asking if that is vicodin or uh what vicodin is but i'm, I'm i promise you i'm gonna, we're gonna get there good time um so uh, uh the bane is what it's used but basically if uh say say you're an opium farmer um in other words you're a you know farm 
pharmacological co- you're in other words you're a pharmaceutical company uh you're gonna you're gonna leach all the morphine you can out of it you're gonna leach all the uh coding you can out of it and you're gonna take the bane and you're gonna do some semi-synthetic you're gonna make some semi-synthetics out of it and that's where you get things like vicodin and that's where you get things like oxycontin or uh, oxycodone uh so you've got you know you have codeine which is maybe a bit stronger than tramadol you have morphine uh that's pretty fucking strong right but nowhere near like it's you know they're we have this thing called morphine equivalent units and that's kind of how like you know they they set morphine as here is the quote standard uh um opiate because that's you know you have to set you have to set a standard at something uh and you know obviously not you know that's not a standard painkiller uh for you know all kinds of pain but if you're you know at a uh at an opiate level of of necessity that's the you know the one that they're like how you know how much of all the of another opiate do you need to hit morphine uh levels of uh of pain killing is the is the gist of it give or take so uh you know if it's like you know there's there are, you know doctors go for different reasons for prescribing different levels uh, uh of uh of painkillers uh or different types uh depends on you know levels of pain <laughs> depends on what era we're in <laughs> i have a friend that just uh broke a bone uh and they sent her away with nothing no, i mean i broke a finger not that you know not that a finger is going to kill you too badly for for that long but they're like they 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 literally called in a prescription for tylenol and advil uh but yeah morphine oh that was another uh it's, i was about to bring this up thank you for uh, uh bringing this one up michael i'm just gonna uh, show your uh question on the on the screen here uh, i'm hoping it'll actually come up um there we go honest question morphine makes me sick and other opiates have improved and not effective on me but percocet has gotten me through uh so this is uh let's see doctors have looked at me like i'm not you're, here's the thing you're not nuts um so percocet has uh is is five milligrams of the same uh opiate that's in oxycontin now oxycontin starts at 10 milligrams and it's extended release percocet five milligrams instant release there's also oxy ir um which is the exact same five milligrams as you get in percocet um but it's just the oxycodone um and no uh acetaminophen added or i don't if anyone's in the uk or um or, or elsewhere in the english speaking word uh, world uh tylenol is the same thing as acetaminophen is the same thing as paracetamol um but when you get uh like there there are reasons why we have these drugs and no matter what there's going to be uh there's no no matter what uh there's hold on a second just doing one thing to try to get that going up there um there's no matter what there's going to be uh there're going to be people with allergies right now even though these drugs are very closely related uh there are lots of substances that are very closely related uh that are not that are just different enough that people are going to have different sensitivities different uh, allergies like uh limonene pinene like it's there like there are lots of things that have a, a base that looks a lot like a benzene ring but they have slight tiny little like the terpenes all look so similar it's and all like it's a lot of potheads in the audience were like she said terpenes we know what that word is uh but those terpenes all look super similar uh chemically but they uh have a lot of different effects don't they they have a lot of different smells they have a lot of different profiles right um so little bitty differences um uh it's i'm getting to hydromorphone don't worry hydromorphone is dilated. it's also a metabolite of um uh, of morphine it's a metabolite of uh, of hydrocodone it's a it's a it's a good drug anyways um and it's also super strong um when you're taking it just in um, in hydromorphone uh, hydromorphone uh form uh which is you know why it's not not as commonly uh prescribed in hell some terpene i i have some terpene to later anyways i just wanted to put something in my mouth Mm. anyways but yeah there's like it's not i'm not surprised that doctors look at you uh like you're uh like you're nuts uh because the um uh doctors aren't necessarily uh toxicologists they're uh, and the other thing is we're at a weird point uh in the the opiate um crisis in the the way we view opiates where uh, we see anyone who's like oh you want a strong opiate you're definitely a drug seeker um 
And it's uh, it's unfortunate because I, you know, a lot of times when people are asking uh, for a certain opiate, it's because they know how they react to certain things. Uh, like the first one of the first drugs I will tell a doctor, like when they're asking, "What are you allergic to?" Um, I'll tell a doctor, um, "I'm allergic to amitriptyline because we, you know, we found out the hard way that that was one of the first drugs we tried me out for my headaches, and I did not react well to that one. Um, and the one. Uh, like it's i've had a handful of surgeries i've had three on my left shoulder one on my left hip uh my tonsils out and a partridge in a pear tree somewhere um and the one surgery that i know they used fentanyl uh, as part of the anesthesia cocktail i threw up uh during <laughs> well i was knocked out uh so i i'm just i probably won't develop a fentanyl addiction it sounds like it might be messy for me uh so anyways uh we were going through kind of the list of different opiates uh so you know we start off tramadol on, on the far end fentanyl on the really far end coding a little bit closer in here morphine somewhere in here right and then we've got you know vicodin really close to morphine now i used to think vicodin was a little you know somewhere in between codeine and morphine and then when i looked at and i mentioned earlier morphine equivalent units right because we want something that like you know you don't want someone if they're like if someone's someone's in pain uh you if you're like i know they've oh, doctors have changed the way they're looking at this now and they're like no we just we just want you to take advil <laughs> fuck anything you used to take you're taking advil unless you're uh dying just had surgery just, like it's you're getting four days of this and you're out um it's a lovely system, uh, but there's uh, like they, you know, they don't want you to have to take more than uh, than, you know, the the one pill every, you know, four to six or six to eight, depending on the surgery uh, four to, you know, four to eight hours, whatever it is uh, to keep you in a manageable level of pain and then taper off because these are typically for acute pain. So that's kind of how they, you know, they look at the thing you've got, the, you know, whether it's surgery, whether it's an, an injury, whether it's cancer, whatever, and go, all right, um, here's what, you know, buy morphine equivalent units they should uh, be, they should have, here's how many hours, here's the, uh, here are drugs that they don't do well on, here are drugs that they do do well on typically, and here's probably the opiate that we should land them on. And if you have a problem with it, they should switch you. Now, once upon a time, uh, you know, we did pain a little, you know, pain was managed a little better. Like before, before Purdue was like, yeah, the way we can make a ton of money is just by pushing grams of OxyContin like a fucking drug dealer. Um, and OxyContin, if I recall correctly, like now, the drugs that look the same pharmacologically, um, if you saw the molecule of them, uh, codeine, uh, hydrocodone, which is the opiate in Vicodin. Again, these are these are typically all combined with Tylenol. Um, oh, I just didn't see. Uh, let me just scroll back. Uh, my dad's been on on round the clock hydromorphone since uh, February for three for, uh, fractured vertebrae. Tail. Oh my God, that I am so sorry, Heather. Jesus. Uh, yeah, I've been on um, uh, on hydromorphone uh, twice now. Um, once was for um, like, and once was for post-operative pain, and the other time was right before um, morphine. Sorry, I'll get to it's Dan. I just, I just laughed at that. I didn't mean it's in a serious moment, and I see Scoville units compared to morphine equivalent units. It's like what? Um, but uh, let's see. Um, just scrolling back up. No, I was on. Um, uh, Dilaudid twice, um, and once was right at. Oh yeah, it's they were both because of the same. This it's I like part of the reason I got this big old tattoo. Um, if you're if you if you've seen me in person, uh, you can see I've got like a, a full foot of scar tissue. If you or of scars, if you lay them end to end, and people would, but you know before I got the tattoo, and I have some regrets. Of, not about the tattoo as a whole, but that I didn't research my tattoo artist a little more carefully. Uh, but the uh you know before that people would see all the scars and they'd be like oh what happened to you you know nobody asks that anymore they just you know ask what song is on the tattoo and it's the last few bars of yesterday by the beatles uh but yeah it was um there's a lot of surgery and the last uh right before um surgery like and they needed to make basically my doctor wanted to make sure that they could get um the nerve pain because i had a lot of nerve pain in my arm um, under control. And I still have, uh, this is when I have to, when I'm not having a good day with the carpal cubital tunnel, I don't have carpal tunnel in both hands. I have carpal and cub, uh, sorry, carpal and cubital tunnel, uh, in one hand is the, and it's, or one arm. And it's the one that I had, um, shoulder surgery in three times, uh, and su surgery number two, sorry, I can't say anything that's going to legally impugn the asshole that did the second surgery. So, but, but I can call him the asshole who did the second surgery. That's legally, um, 
oh, allowable. Uh, but you know, second surgery, um, they said it was going to be a close, you know, a keyhole um, arthroscopic. So it was an open surgery. They didn't change the anesthesia plan or the painkiller plan at all between surgery, you know, from, you know, after they were like, yeah, it's going to be a closed surgery. I wake up. I'm don't, I'm not aware until I leave the hospital, how much, how big my scar is that I've like, what's gone on there. They didn't change the like they didn't add an, uh, a pain pump in like and not a pain pump like a fun bit but like they were supposed to have like a lidocaine little thing that was just continually delivering to the they did not like it was it was a fucking mess my mom was like i've never seen you uh just seem so out of it for so many hours and you were it, it was it's not that i was in and out of consciousness but i wasn't quite um with reality for the first day of that it was it was not a good time uh so for a while my uh you know my doctor that was ended up doing the third surgery uh he really wanted to make sure we could manage the nerve pain and that was eventually managed pretty well by gabapentin uh when we did the third operation um and it was a while of being on some heavier painkillers than i should have been uh for this arm uh while we were sorting out the nerve pain and i have I have some thoughts on that in retrospect. I really think that uh, doctors didn't know as much about how to manage, you know, how to manage pain with the lighter grade opiates like tramadol. And I had a doctor that was passing out fucking buckets of Vicodin for a while. Uh, and I'm, I'm very, very, I want to be clear about this. I'm, I'm not on any opiates uh, anymore. And I'm very, very lucky that I am a, a person that could get off opiates after I had surgery without, uh, without it being difficult. Like, uh, some people would have gone through the number of years of prescribing, um, uh, mostly Vicodin, uh, occasionally Percocet and twice, uh, my doctor put me on Dilaudid. Um, it's just, you know, in rotation with the other two. Um, and once was because when they went to do, uh, an MRA, an MR arthrogram where they inject you with dye. Now I'd had an MRA after, um, after the first surgery and I knew they'd had major trouble getting the needle in there. Um, and I was, you know, crying on the table while they were doing it. And they were like, mm, this is... and I'd had, you know, a second surgery. <laughs> I'd had a second surgery since then. And I, I go to get, I, 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 you know, go to get my MRI done. And this was, um, this was one of the two times that I was prescribed uh, a lot of the second time was after, uh, surgery. I went to get my, the MRI done and I warn, I'm just going to take, um, message off of there. Now I, I warn this, uh, this very sweet, now I'm, you know, the, the doctor that's doing the MRA is not at um, the same facility uh, because it's just, you know, medical facilities have, you know, where you've got one thing is you know, different than another. Um, you know, I was sent to another uh, building. Yes. Uh, Dilaudid and hydromorphone are the same thing. Um, so I'm sent to a different facility to go get my MRA. Um, and I warned them, I'm like, just to let you know, <laughs> This thing happened last time I got one of these. They attempted to shove a needle full of full of science liquid into my shoulder, and I started screaming and crying on the table uh, incoherently for a while. Could you? It's there. Like, what's going to happen here? Um, and this very sweet, this doctor, this wonderful South African doctor. Oh my God! If a voice was ever, if if there was ever a voice form of Valium, this man had it. Oh, and he tells me, he starts saying, my dear. I'm like, oh, 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 my dear. I'm like, he had me at my dear. And he says, my dear, I've performed over 10,000. I'm not doing the accent. I'm just trying to give the the feel of his voice um, because I, I, I'm i going to butcher a South African accent. But he's just, my dear, I've performed over 10,000 of these. Trust me, you're in good hands. And I believed him. Fool that I was. Um, and after, like, they made, I think, two or three pushes to get this in. And I'm just trying not to shake by the third second or third like i don't remember how because like i'm i felt so bad afterwards because i'm just walking back to you know, like from the room where they're injecting me to the you know main like you know hall full of like waiting rooms with just curtains in front of the beds and like someone's holding me by the arm to try to help me walk to my seat and i'm just like just stuttery like like lip sucking like the whole like it took 20 minutes to just stop involuntarily just crying because it was so awful like they hit scar tissue in there ruby what's up i have we have we have three doggies so i've got someone always playing with a someone always playing with a toy 
but uh, yeah, it was it was not good. If you know you have scar tissue in a thing and you know it's been hit before uh, with an MR with, a, with, a, with an arthrogram, it's gonna get hit again. Uh, and don't let even the kindest of doctors uh, with with a lovely accent talk you into believing otherwise. Because afterwards, like at at the end, I was like, uh, like I remember just kind of squeaking out, was I shaking too much? I can. Cut. They're like nobody would be able to get a needle in there. It's just not. It's just not possible. We're going to do a normal old M MRI. I'm like, I went through all that for fucking nothing. It just, anyways, I think I think I have a dog that's about to jump on me. Ruby, up! What do, do, the people want to see you. If you guys haven't met Ruby, this is Ruby. Ruby, Ru Ruby, why are you sniffing me? What you doing? This is this is a Ruby girl. All oh, yeah, pain is pain is hard. Pain is hard indeed. This is this is my blood girl. Oh, this is my roommate's dog Ruby. There are there are two roommates' dogs. There's my one. My my one buddy that you guys know, uh, and somewhere there's a Rilo somewhere around here too, who I also call the morning fox. Rilo is very cute, but this one, this one is like mom. It's about or aunt, or uncle. It's about the time of day for for her to be at the doggy. We can't say the p a r k word out loud. Eventually, she's going to learn how to spell, and then I am super fucked. Anyways, uh, but she's, she's such a good Ruby. Why go up? If I could talk her up onto this lap, I would be so happy. Ruby, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. There we go. That's... <laughs> Hi, Ru. Ru, do you just want to be on the bed? Oh, she just wants to be on the bed. There you go. There you go, baby. Yeah, life is okay. Life is... Wait, wait, wait. Ruby? Ruby? Hold on. Ruby and the cat do not get along yet. I'm working on, I'm working on making this better. I'm just, I'm just terrified. Like the cat kind of normal. Normally, I keep the door to my bedroom closed during the day, and the, like I've got a big enough space in here. The cat's got some wiggle room. She's got, she's got herself a lovely little life. We have to keep the, you know, just can't cross the stream. So I'm like, all right, is, is kitty hiding. We're good good um she tends to if she can if she can tell the dogs are, are afoot she uh she runs um let's see where where was i i'm i'm glad you're i'm glad you're enjoying it karen thank you for thank you for coming karen um but anyways I'm, i hope you guys are enjoying the puppers oh and look look at look at this look at this it's a fluff to oh oh i don't know how i get anything done with this guy i just i don't you're just you're too much you're too much all the time it's, I'm, let's see, uh, nothing like roaching your liver with Tylenol due to a hydrocodone. Yeah, um, that's the, the scary thing is that a lot of people who uh, who die, who suffer um, with these opiate addictions, uh, they end up more often than not, like it's depending on the on the breed of opiate addiction you've got, um, people are, are almost more likely to end up um, having liver problems because of the Tylenol that they're complex with, uh, then they are having uh, um, CNS depression to the point of their brain not reminding uh, their lungs to to breathe and that kind of, uh, you know, necessary for life things. It's, you're gonna turn yellow before you turn pale. Uh, it is unfortunately um, how that how that so often goes. Um, so it's, you know, like I said, it, there's, there's a long list of of opiates from you know the bottom of the barrel you know tramadol and when i say bottom of the barrel i mean whatever you're getting over the counter that's going to kill pain so much stronger than anything you're getting at the store and i don't see why doctors don't start there and like if you've got if you have a broken thing you need something stronger if you've had surgery you need something stronger if you show up to the ER and you're not screaming and writhing in pain and you're able to have a conversation a lot of times a lot like a lot of like I said, not broken. A lot of times, tramadol is gonna do you. A lot of times, a, a very a low dose of some of, of of a codeine is gonna do you, and you only need a few days of it. But the fact that they've gotten to the point where they're like, we're not doing any of it, is um, is is strange. But anyways, uh, back to um, let's see, back to back to what we were talking about uh, the show Painkiller um, with uh, with the OxyContin. Uh, thing like there are there is a use now I know that there uh, there's the point of view that we shouldn't have oxycontin at all it should go away all opiates should be uh, uh, should be gone entirely and that's not that's that's the far opposite uh, end of it like we don't we don't need all opiates to go away 
Uh, and we don't need to, you know, just take all, we should prescribe more to get sales up. We need prescribers to, you know, we need responsible prescribing. We need people to understand that, uh, you know, for some people, pain is, Ruby, you seem to be sniffing for, for, look, Ruby, I understand going on a pussy hunt, but, you know, let's not, let's, let's, let's not live on camera. Come on. That's a, that's a bit, of, hey, Rube, we're going to, we're going to have to kick you out. <laughs> Come here, girl. Rube, out, out, out. You look a little, look, she's, one day she's going to try to eat the cat. And I just, we can't have that. Ruby, out, girl. Out, girl. You can do it. Oh. Okay. She's, she, she's sitting next to me on the chaise. She will be fine. I'm curious how much Oxycontin for, oh, we're just, we're, we're pitting this one. I, I, it's, Dan, that was mean. I love it. Look, any. Any, 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 look, any, anytime someone wants to take a swing at Rush Limbaugh on my show, I encourage it. They say you shouldn't speak, you, you should never speak ill of the, the dead, only good. Rush Limbaugh is dead. Good. I know that's an old joke and I, I know I've stolen it and I know it's been said about Rush Limbaugh plenty of times. I'll say it again every time. I'll see you scrolling through. Um, there do. Have had a few terminal cancer patients with chronic pain on oxycontin or fentanyl patch potent meds but they have exactly that's uh and that is a, that there is my is my point uh and i think that people when they say these meds just go away they haven't seen uh this they haven't seen what you've seen they haven't you know been through what chronic pain patients have been through uh deal with this i think ruby wandered off but are you are you leaving me too or are you sitting you chilling out this dog is just very good with being Plopped wherever. <laughs> Guys, I gotta go. Ruby, get the fuck out. Nope. No. Hold on. Okay. I'll. It's been. It's been real. I have a dog acting poorly. Ruby. Ruby, out. You. Ruby, you get out of here. All the dogs. Oh. I turned around. And I, I, I thought. Uh, I thought Ruby had left the room. She was trying to eat the cat. I should have known. She just was trying to pull off an elf. Lexi, you okay, girl? Lexi. Oh, that cat is never talking to me again. Oh. I, I'm, I'm okay. I just have to, I mean, my heart rate's a little, let me just, uh, I'm gonna. I give me a minute. I'm just gonna just close this door. Close ugh. the little window that lets Ruby look in. Lexi, Lexi, girl. Fortunately, there's a lot of space that Ruby can't get into under the bed. Lexi, it's okay. It's uh, well, just. Enjoy the view of my backside, whatever you got to do. It's, yeah, that's, uh, that was not what I expected. We're going to, we're going to do this for, I think she's okay. She should be. Hold on. Lexi, girl. Oh, I heard a meow. She's fine. It's a, to meow slash a hiss. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, gonna do a. You know, I attempted fate. <laughs> Told me to fuck myself. <laughs> my lord. This is why my shoes. It's a very good point, Heather. We'll get back to opiates in just a second. 
This is why my shoes are all hanging uh, on the, uh, if you can see the reflection right there, there's a mirror there the, and the mirror is reflecting my bathroom door there. Those are all shoes hanging right there. Um, my, hey mom, I can see you're busy. Yeah, my, the kids are like, we can see you're busy. It's time to, it's time to cause a ruckus. She's like, I'm not trusting you until tomorrow. We're gonna, we're gonna let them sort out their. I love, I love that there's a spike in people coming onto the stream because they're like, oh, things just. There was drama with the side pets. We gotta go check this out. Um, inhaling, goosefaba, goosefaba. Someone's gotta explain that to my one Gen Z viewer. Yeah, this is just vapor. There's no marijuana in this. Not in the state of California from a company called Fused. Not at all. Okay. Yeah, for, fortunately, I'm on a cocktail of not opiate medications to keep my me strong and and you know relaxed or something like this. Stop. I hear animals being naughty in another direction. <sighs> see. Oh God, damn it! They weren't. But yeah, yeah, Gen Gen Zers, man. There's there's a lot they miss. I used to work in a drugstore, and it was known which doctors wrote the janky scripts for pay. Some patients admitted to licking their fentanyl patches when they were. Oh my God! I, I so fun story in one of the labs I worked at um, because you know we had a bunch of toxicology people, and because they were not necessarily well behaved. I know one guy was trying to quit smoking. Um, and the thing with, and he was wearing the patch and we had, like, I wasn't working there at the time. I was, I was told this, uh, um, ap like after the fact, um, but from what I understood, somebody sprayed a bit of, of, you know, isopropanol out like alcohol on it, the patch on this guy's neck. Um, and it just like released all the nicotine into his, you know, nicotine will fuck you up if you get way too much of it at once. <laughs> So look, just don't, it's the thing with those patches is that if like with the, um, with the fentanyl patches, like there's, those are an extent, a controlled release, uh, you know, delivery system. They're supposed to, you leave them on, they, they give you, they give you a controlled amount of fentanyl over a nice long period of time. There's enough fentanyl in a patch to kill someone, um, but, and I want to, I want to point this out, um, but all the rumors uh, about like, you know, you can't, and there's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite internet doctors who's also, who also happens to be a real doctor. Uh, I believe his name is uh, Ryan Marino. He is um, a doctor, toxicologist, knows his shit cold uh, over on, he's over on Twitter. And he said over and over and fuck again, that this whole uh, myth uh, about, you know, like being able to touch fentanyl powder and have it kill you. It's fucking bullshit. Okay. You cannot, you have to ingest it or inhale it or fucking lick the shit up. But if you've got, it doesn't matter how pure it is. It doesn't matter how much it is. It doesn't matter. Like you have to get it into your, like you have to inject it or inhale it or, you know, you, it has to get, you cannot with dry fentanyl powder, <laughs> Um, this this myth that these cops are getting like oh they they looked at, like it's sh sh exactly thank you sh shocker the cops look look I'm just saying whenever I think it was recently when they said uh, there was a headline that uh, cops had a methamphetamine exposure Re really we're now they're now dying from from stumbling into a brick of like what. A meth exposure. Oh yes, and I'm having myself a marijuana exposure now. I just, I'm just saying. It's is smoking it lethal? Is smoking um, right when you say is smoking uh which sorry um, uh is smoking fentanyl fatal? Like smoking any of the like, uh, I'm guessing you're asking about uh, fentanyl. I mean. It can be if you smoke too much of it is what it comes down to. Like I, um, I, I, uh, one of my close friends, um, it's, uh, um, uh, one of my, 
uh, closest friends, her um, her ex, like, and she was, I want to be clear, like, when she started dating him, he was not a fentanyl addict. It took till very, took till many, many, many years um, in the relationship uh, before um, he developed, uh, a, you know, some addiction problems. Uh, and it's, yeah, you can, yeah, he's, he, um, you'd be amazed at how much fentanyl someone can smoke without, well, well, just almost killing themselves. I can hear the dog sniffing at the fucking door. That dog really wants to go full elf on my cat. And I used to think the dog was just curious about the cat. I think the cat's going to live in my room forever. So, oh. You guys have now heard me scream at the dog, which that was not my plan today. I don't know if I'm going to keep this video up after today, so you guys get to, this one's going to, this video will stay online. KJ, you just said you seem breathless. I can't remember. Do you have asthma? Were you here 10 minutes ago when my dog just dashed under the bed to try to, like, eat the cat? Like, I'm still, I'm still having myself a bit of a, whew, from, a uh, from that. It was it's a bit of a moment. Um, I don't know what happens if you smoke lidocaine, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, cause lidocaine, uh, you can get lidocaine poisoning. Um, I had a dog chomp a cat. I'm, you know, like these dogs have fought each other and have all drawn blood on each other. And like, here's the thing. It doesn't happen often, but every once in a while, uh, they go a little nuts at each other. Um, I would guess that the cat is fine because there's not a lot of room for the dog to move under, uh, that, um, under the bed. No, it was, um, yeah, like it's, th thank you for me up on that one, Harley. This was tense it, like i i almost like hit uh stop on the stream but it was like there was no um moment in which i could like find the like like spot the button on here where it said end stream while i was trying to stop the dog um so it was like i'll, I'll just i'll just get wait for this whole thing to calm down <laughs> It'll be fine but oh, cats and dogs man uh but yeah it's sure I was like, should I grab the car? Look, if I, it's, I, I have, it's, uh, Eva's out, but I have, uh, have her car. Uh, so if I needed to get the cat to an emergency vet or, you know, just, just needed to get my ass out of here, I'm, I'm capable, but I, I do appreciate it. And if I ever need to, I will take you up on that off of my friend. Um, it's, or, you know, we could just have a ceremonial, uh, burning of my wedding dress, uh, ceremony tonight. <laughs> um, but that it's, I, I feel like Eva should be involved in that one. And she's, she's girl is out on a date. Uh, it's, we, we went, we went, oh, here's a fun story. Uh, so picketing has been a, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change, like, I, I think we've gone through a lot of the opiate stuff. I don't, I don't think that was what I even uh, planned on, on talking about, um, uh, you know, beginning of the, the stream. It was just, I'm like, I will take your questions. And the first question, you know, threw me down the exact rabbit hole that I spent all of grad school going down. Uh, because, um, as, as some of you know, my, uh, my master's thesis was on prescription opiate abuse, uh, trends and toxicology. So, uh, ma'am, I have, I have 22 ready to go. Uh, I got, I got you covered. Um, I could, I can go for some, I can go for some, we could, there's still, there's still firewood back here. There's, there's fire. Anyways, um, but we had a good, uh, we've had a good little uh, ramble down opiate lane. Um, but yeah, like I just, I think the the sum up of that, I think the thing that I was getting to while my, while the dog tried to eat the cat, um, they don't get to chill out in here anymore. Ruby does not get extended that trust anymore. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of them that look uh, very similar uh, chemically. Um, oxycodone and, and morphine are about this, I believe oxy is a little bit stronger than morphine. I could be misremembering that one. Um, uh, uh, here's the thing: the opiate um, in that we think of as as heroin, it's called it's one six diacetyl morphine or just diacetyl morphine. Uh, when you're testing someone for heroin, they're actually it's because it metabolizes so quickly. Basically, um, uh, diacetyl morphine is uh, it can it, it does a really good job of passing a much more efficient job than the other. Um, opiates that have a similar structure of passing through the blood brain barrier. So you're getting a really good dose of that right into the, right into the fun center. Um, but then it metabolizes, uh, in about a half hour, uh, to the point where, where you're mostly, uh, down to just morphine. Oh, darn. Uh, and you get, you still have traces of, um, 
of uh, six acetyl or um, or it's uh, six. We used to call it six ma'am uh, in the testing lab that I worked in. So you have uh, just you know six acetyl uh, morphine. So you've got I mean, one one of those little acetyl groups left. So when we're testing for morphine or for heroin, you're testing for the primary metabolite of it. Uh, and so for the next six hours, uh, so, you know, for you really just get that heroin high for the first half hour of it. And then the next six hours is, you know, morphine, which, you know, not a bad word. Do that. Uh, but that's the, uh, that's the whole, um, gist of it. Uh, but fentanyl on the other hand, now this is, uh, something that, no, my friend who's got, uh, um, and, and like, I don't, uh, you know, it's, they're a good friend if they want to, if they're willing to come on and talk about, uh, their experiences with someone, uh, uh, that, you know, with someone in the family that, uh, or family, uh, with someone they were involved with who was uh, a fentanyl addict, I, I'd welcome that to come on. But one thing they've said, um, a lot, oh, I, <laughs> thank you, Keith. I am settling well into the new place. It's, uh, here I am in the new place and I really love it. Um, but the, uh, the thing, um, that she said, whenever she sees, you know, news reports about, um, somebody dying of a, you know, of an overdose and it's like oh it, it's they were on uh and you know the news will be like they were on heroin it must have been and it was you know they and fentanyl like you know both heroin and fentanyl come up in the autopsy report and it'll say you know they were on uh heroin it must have been spiked with fentanyl here's the thing a lot of people are just trying to get fentanyl to get higher um and i'm not saying i want to be clear i'm not saying that uh to pass judgment I'm saying that, you know, people want to get high. Um, people who are looking to get high on heroin are probably also looking to get high on something stronger than heroin. Like I, you know, it's like, I've, I've been on Vicodin before. It, it's not, it doesn't feel bad. It's like, I'm I, like, I'm, I'm not, um, I've learned at this point though, like, and I think the way that my body reacts to it has changed a little bit over time. Like when I was younger, you know, it took it for a long time, did its job, uh, got off of it. Now I take it for a few days. I get off of it and my head is pounding me for the day afterwards. And I'm aware of that now, which helps. Uh, but man, uh, given you were given a fentanyl patch during childbirth didn't help but i feel like childbirth pain is a fuck you level of pain that like it doesn't matter it's like 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 god himself could 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 uh could become real and come down and be like my child no pain shall become it's nah there's a human being ripping its way out of you that that shit's gone gonna hurt um but yeah the uh um the yeah the thing with you know people it being the news, you know, people that we, that we love, that we respect, that we love their art, um, you know, uh, dying, uh, with fentanyl in their system. And a lot of cases it's because they were seeking out, uh, heroin that was spiked with fentanyl or they were seeking out fentanyl itself. Um, and it's, it's really unfortunate that we've gotten ourselves to this place, but it's like, it's, it's not the, like, you know, this is, uh, this is what happens when we have, um, the strong of drugs available is that people who are taking the next drug down are going to seek out something stronger while, you know, when heroin starts being less um, efficacious, when you need more and more of it over time, you're going to be like, wait, I can just take a tiny little bit of fentanyl, maybe risk a little bit of death, but probably get high there. You know, if you're already super addicted, that's not a bad trade-off um, when fentanyl is cheap and you're, you know, it's not, yeah, it's, uh, propofol killed my, I see people talking about Michael Jackson over here. Um, the pro, like I, um, propofol I got for colonoscopy was pretty all right. I can under, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, I'm, I'm not getting into that. I believe, who was it that, um, it was, uh, was it Lisa Marie Presley who died recently? Hold on a quick second. Um, just going to poke at that one. I think. Could be misremembering. Lisa, so um, people, I, no, that was that was an interesting one because I discussed that one with, um, uh, you know, with uh, with my roommate um, because I think they were trying. One thing that came up with that one um, because I believe that she had, um, uh, she was, you know, they found obviously opiates in her system as well. Uh, and she, uh, um, she'd recently, or I don't know how recently they said, but she'd had, 
uh, what should we call it, um, gastric bypass or one of the gastric, um, yeah, it's, I want to say it was gastric bypass. Yeah, she'd had gastric bypass. Um, and she was, they also found opiates in her system, like, you know, strong opiates in her system, um, small bowel obstruction. Uh, the, the thing about a bowel obstruction, uh, now somebody asked earlier if Imodium um, was, it's, I believe it was Harley, um, it's, um, who asked if Imodium was a type of opiate. Now there's something uh, something kind of neat about our uh, our guts. Now if you occasionally hear a wooey person say, our guts have their own brain. And you know what, sometimes I think my pooper has a mind of its own, uh, but that's not quite accurate. It does have, um, we do have some receptors, you know, we have receptors all through our body that are also in our nervous system and that doesn't necessarily mean we have a it's our own brain you know in our baby toe. like we've got all sorts of receptors everywhere um and our our gut is a little you know it's it's its own special weird fucking thing. um but um opioid induced hyperalgesia is, uh is if not indeed um it's basically our opioid um yeah, the, the fun thing with uh, getting off of opioids is that they'll it'll it'll trick your body into thinking that you're in a whole fuckload of pain. Uh, hyper meaning a lot, uh, algesia meaning pain, uh, and it's just your body uh, is going to keep. And that's part of there's a whole thing with uh, C-phosphorylation of the, like this is me using a big word that I don't need to use right now, but basically the shape of your uh, of your endorphin receptors changes a little bit. It's a big $2 word that I almost remember from my grad school days called C phosphorylation. And I could be misremembering it, uh, but basically those receptors change shape a little bit and you need to keep bombarding it with more and more and stickier opiates that are going to like try to grab on harder. Um, and that's why we end up with people who once upon a time could manage their pain with codeine or with something really, you know, on the weaker end that are eventually like in crazy amounts of pain you know a couple hours after taking morphine and eventually like you know my doctor's not prescribing me enough morphine i know a guy who can get me heroin and that's how that shit happens but uh back on to uh lisa marie for uh for a minute uh it came up that she had a small bow a small bowel obstruction and a few people were saying this is um a uh you know it was it was a or um it, it was a a possible uh complication from her, uh, from her bariatric surgery, she was also on a fuckload of opiates. And you know what opiates do? Um, we're saying about, um, you know, back to where we were, Imodium, you know, being a, a kind of opiate. And I don't, I'm not sure if that's the case. Let me double check. But Imodium, uh, it's a, it, it's, it stops you from pooping. Um, and the thing about opiates is that you've got opiate receptors in your gut. And you know what happens when, uh, when, when opiates attach to opiate receptors in your gut? causes this thing called gut immobility, 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 it's immobility is sperm. It causes your gut to stop fucking moving so much. So you're, you're just, it's gonna, everything, everything comes to a screeching halt. And nary a poo shall pass. It's to the, to, to the, to, to the porcelain throne. It's, there's a, mm, Oh, and is enteric the one that I'd heard about this a while ago? Enteric is the one that kind of, you know, it, it basically stops the, like, it's not the um, the same as the, the nasal inhaler that uh, uh, that lets you, you know, come back to life, but it basically st uh, stops it from, uh, stops opiates from uh, grabbing onto uh, the receptors just in your, um, in, in your gut uh and uh whatchamacallit let's you know let's your it, it allows patients to poop once again oh yeah thank uh thank you it's uh narcan was the word i was looking for um so uh so oh god keith uh so her faith wasn't too much different than elvis no elvis died of a heart attack from straining to shit on the toilet I don't know if his was due to opiates or just he had a heart that was ready to go out. He, him, heart attack, her bowel obstruction. I, mm, I still feel like, you know, mm, you know, there is kind of a bit of a pair. God damn it. <laughs> huh. Anyways. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, she was, it seemed from what I understand, let me just double check. I don't want to, I don't want to say this and then, you know, have someone in Elvis's estate come and, uh, you know, fucking sue me. Not that, let's see, Lisa Marie Presley, hold on, lost, let's see, and this was from not that long ago, 
Um, Lisa Marie Presley lost 40 to 50 pounds, took opioids, took opioids before death. Um, let's see, Presley, Forgotten Son Speaks Out. Um, I became so addicted to fentanyl. But yeah, opioids is continuing to show up in the, I'm not sure if it was fentanyl or not because I keep, but I do keep seeing opioids. Um, but yeah, that's more than likely um, the cause of the bowel obstruction and not the she had gastric bypass. So like I worry, I say this as somebody who, um, you know, one of my other beats has been weight loss and I'm a big supporter of if your doctor has suggested it, um, if you are looking to lose weight, if you are someone who's, you know, this is affecting my health, this is affecting my moving around, this is affecting what I think is going to allow me to live a longer life. Um, I'm a big supporter of, uh, of saying, yeah, medical support in weight loss, whether it be, uh, medications, whether it be surgery, super supportive of going down that route. And I, I worry that people will read some of the headlines and not dig through and not, you know, be aware of, uh, what can happen with opiates in the gut and not know, <laughs> and not know that, um, this was likely caused, uh, by, you know, by opiates, not, um, you know, not a, a likely properly performed um, bariatric surgery. So it's, you know, it's unclear what happened. I mean, it's also possible that she had com complications with the bariatric surgery that caused her to seek out pain meds. We, I do not know. Like that's, that's, you know, beyond uh, any of our understanding. Cause you know, she hasn't called me yet from the beyond to get the reach of out. Um, but no, it's a, uh, it's, you know, it, it's shitty news all around. Um, and it, you know, typically is if somebody is on opiates for a long term, uh, for, for the long term, depending on, like, I know people who have been on them for years and years because they have a condition that, um, that, that necessitates it. Uh, it's just not a lot of conditions necessitate it. Um, so I, you know, highly recommend if you can possibly avoid being on opiates long term, fucking avoid that shit. Uh, but depending on what you've got, there are reasons why we have different opiates. There are reasons why uh, there is also, you know, a slew of other medications uh, in different drug classes that can manage these things, which is why like, you know, tramadol, it's kind of an atypical opiate. It's fully synthetic. It doesn't have the same uh, shape as the other ones. Uh, it does have like, and I mean, I've been on it before and it's one that I can take and then, you know, not take without uh, a, a, even a smidge of withdrawal. So that's one that if you're dealing with pain long-term, uh, doctors are less likely to give you the hairy eyeball about. Um, but you know, if you're someone who has even a smidge of like, Oh, I've had an, like not, you know, don't fuck with that shit. Um, and it's just, it's, I understand after, uh, knowing the cost of the opiate epidemic. And I don't mean the dollars, like the dollars, yeah, but like the cost of the opiate epidemic in terms of the humans we have lost, uh, I can see why doctors are much more gun shy about um, uh, uh, prescribing them. Completely agree, um, Ryan, on this one. Toradol, I've, like, I've been given shots of this one. Uh, I, I've been shot in the ass with this. And I liked it. Um, it's, I, I rarely, now I'm on a prescription and said uh, every day, I've talked about this in here before. Um, I'm on indomethacin, otherwise known as indocin. Um, and it's, it's a rarely used uh, um, prescription NSAID that works for a handful of uh, headache variants. And I'm sure it's prescribed for something else. I will never know. Uh, but I am put on it because my doctors want to destroy my kidneys and give me ulcers. Uh, no, it's because I have a... Um, I, I have a, uh, a nerve in the left side of my face that wants, that wants bad things for me. Um, and they, they won't... It's, look, a friend of mine, uh, when he told me the story of when his father got, um, a, uh, like, and this is back in, I want to say the seventies is like, yeah, like he told me when, when his father got, um, trigeminal neuralgia, which or a, a form of, uh, uh, trigeminal neuralgia, uh, uh, when, and it was more of a mechanical issue. Like mine was idiopathic. It just kind of happened one day. He's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they gave my father a shot of, uh, of cocaine right to the nerve. And I'm like, what? Why was I born when I was God? I just I would just like the shot of cocaine to my face. Now, as I've uh, I'll I'll mention the Topamax in a second, uh, but like I wrote about that pretty recently. Cocaine was one of our earliest um, anesthetics. It were or um, 
like it was used in uh, spinal anesthesia. It's used like it was used for doing uh, eye surgery. It was one of the first earliest things that we knew about uh, for, uh, for topical anesthesia, uh, anesthesia. Um, like, and I, I think one of the first, like, I'm sure the doctor was just, you know, curious what it tasted like, but when, you know, when they, uh, there was a doctor who put a little bit, you know, there was trying to figure out what the stuff did medicinally, you know, put a little bit on his tongue. I was like, huh, that's, I've got a piff of num pong. Um, you know, and eventually they're like, let's, let's figure out what else can, you know, they can do with this. And there was one doctor, um, and I wrote about this, I think last week, uh, but, you know, figured out, tr- did some experiments with spinal anesthesia, uh, did experiments on his, on his assistant. I guess they, I, I guess they did some pulling on his, he, apparently he took a hammer to his assistant's, uh, chin. He, um, did some t- vigorous, uh, uh, yanking on his assistant's balls uh afterwards they went out to dinner and had drinks and everything was fine this was all from giving him a shot of cocaine in the spinal column uh, and as he phrased it and this was all in german uh, so i assume it sounded much angrier but he said he was going to cocaineize or coconization of the spinal column and because that's just an amazing uh topical or local anesthetic uh it's and at the time this was the late 1800s like they had general anesthesia but did they really have general anesthesia you know like it was uh you know it's kind of it was an era of medicine where like medical school wasn't uh all one thing uh it's uh, it, medical school was kind of you know some people did it like an internship some people did uh you know a formal school thing and then there were a bunch of medical schools that were bad <laughs> like it was you know they were you know it's there were a lot of things that weren't very conventional yet that needed to be rooted out and that's a whole nother thing i wrote up the, a thing on the flexner report a while ago you should go read that um but it was uh you know things were not all uh, hunky dory but i'm just saying once upon a time i could have gotten a shot of cocaine in the face and it would have treated my headaches instead i'm on into medicine and slowly killing my fucking kidneys and my stomach and my will to live but anyways back to tour it all which is why i brought this up here um if you're if you go to the er for pain uh, and you're, you're in some serious fucking pain and you mean it. You're in, you're not there to get high. You're in pain, which I, I promise you, there's no good reason to go to the ER, um, for, for a, for a tickle. Like it's, if you're there, you best be hurting. Um, and they offer you a shot of Toradol. You take that shit. That will knock out a lot of pain. And I've gone there in a lot of pain and I was amazed I like, I've, I've, you know, I've been put on it for a couple things before. I'm always amazed at how well it works. Now you can't, you can't stay on it for like, from what I understand, you cannot stay on it for too long. It is some strong stuff. Not again, the, the unsaids are not great for kidneys long-term, uh, but you know what, this one, like if you're, if, if you're, if you're gonna, if you're going into the ER, if you're not alert, just go, go get, get and they offer you this, get it. It's not going to get you high, but it is going to get you out of pain. And isn't that what you want after all? Take take the Toradol. Take it every time. Always recommend the Toradol. Always accept the Toradol. So take, them, take that off there. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at this one. See, so I refuse to take any type of opioid uh, type narco because I'm an alcoholic and I'm 11 years sober. Congratulations. Uh, that is a lot. It's I. Look, a lot of people do not manage to get sober. So like, cheers to to you from my um, ca- highly caffeinated thing. I know even some of the opioid free narcotics can still mess you up though too. No, it's, I, uh, I, I highly respect that. Um, it's like, you know, if, if like, I think different people have different um, views on their, uh, on how to manage their sobriety. It's like, if, you know, this was my issue. I'm okay with this. And that's fine for some people. I, you know, if you, if the way for you to, manage your sobriety is to not touch any of them don't touch any of them i fully respect that i know i am i have you know i'm i feel fortunate that my that i like i see my friends that have uh managed to get and stay sober and i i see you know friends that are still struggling with it and i realize how hard it must be uh to to have gotten to that place where you're staying sober uh because i know the friends that are that are still struggling they're smart and they know and they're they understand what's happening to their life while they're going through it uh so it's not like this is it, it's it's that has to be a a lot that you're going that that 
has gone that you're going through slash has gone through you. So uh, cheers to you from a non-alcoholic uh, beverage. So anyways, yeah, the, it's a, a smart, um, it's probably the smartest decision uh, for you, but I'm, I'm just, just throwing it out there. Uh, if you've broken a buttload of bones, uh, you know, talk to a doctor about a way to, to manage that. Cause like, there's, there are points at which, you know, this, the, there I'm just saying they have their place, uh, but you know, try to try to avoid them unless it's like ah situation dire. Uh, and even then, like work with you know, if you ever were in a position where you absolutely fucking need, need them because oh, you had open hearts, so, you know what? Never mind. You're gonna you could be run over by a it's you, you could be run over by a fucking truck at this point. You'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna walk it off. You go, Scott. Cheers to you. You're making me feel like I could maybe quit marijuana one day, but why would I? It's when it starts affecting my work, I'll get off the marijuana. I don't know. Maybe it's affecting my work. I have, I am trying to cut down. I have cut down quite a bit. Let's see. Um, Tortle, they shot me up with it when they pried open my, ah! They shot me uh, up with it when they pried open my cervix and scraped the endometrial lining off my uterus. Like, go, do you by any chance have endometriosis? Oh, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I think this comment needs to be uh, featured up there. It's, I, I don't know how many uh, folks we have in here who uh, have gotten sober, are sober, but just, I, my, my applause to you. Like, I, like I said, I think we've all, like, I'm, I'm 40, where I think we're at the age where we've all seen some friends struggle with this over the years. And it's not, again, we just it's we're we're ha like for our friends that are still struggling we're rooting for you uh for those of you who are who are we're who are still working to stay on the other side of this we're, we're rooting for you to stay there so anyways cheers i'm just gonna just drop it off of there open heart surgery dear god you're either you're either very brave or very crazy or kind of a bit of a hold on hold on i don't have a microphone in front i'm gonna i'm gonna pull the microphone up even though it's just a prop because because i have to i have to i have to Hi, mom has entered the chat. I'm so excited. Hi, mom. So it's I. Anyways, just it's 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 exciting. Look, when I tell people my mom approves of my you know uh, science with a side of dick jokes, she literally comes to my live streams. So it's I you know could be could be worse. I was about to say hold on a second. I just I felt, I, I have a funny prop over here that I gotta mix in with this i can just get it working in time to not look like a complete tool i did manage to hide the horns at least until now just i need to use these more often <laughs> they are they are rather they are rather fetching i think do we are we keeping these shall we I think these have to be irregularly more. I do have a unicorn horn somewhere from the same thing. Anyways, got these. I think these might have been the last uh, one of the last dates I went on pre sighting. It was yeah, still still friends with the guy that gave them to me. So, anyways, but yeah, those are they. I I do like those. Anyways. Um, it was to have my pericardium removed, but still open heart surgery and is heart. Yeah, that's, that doesn't sound, sounds unpleasant. See, fortunately, a lot of NFL players from the eighties have fucked up kidneys because of Toradol. Really? NFL players from the eighties fucked up kidneys because of Toradol? I'd never heard that. Hmm. I just, I, that's a, that's a thing that I'm going to look up. So, like, when did that even come out? I had not heard about that at all. No. Something told yeah. For it all. When did it, when was it approved? Toradol, um, was approved on November 30th, 1989. So, oh wait, approved by the US FDA in March, 1990. So are, are so is it because, I'm, I'm just curious, when you say NFL players from the 80s have fucked up kidneys because of the Toradol, um, 
do you are you saying that they they have fucked up kidneys because of things they did uh after like because that was what they were given for treatment after the nfl because they definitely weren't given that for treatment in the 80s just just throwing it up it's okay like i'm i'm sassing you but no um it is a good point because there's like look i don't know if that's the like i'm and i'm saying this having like having run a couple of marathons there was uh there was something that we were you know told going into uh the races and like we never you never knew if we were getting overly cautious advice because like people would plan for you know you planned for the worst case scenario when you were going out to try to survive running 26.2 miles because the whole point with running like unless you were an elite your goal was to fucking survive right like or if you were you know like if your goal was to you know qualify for boss like goal one uh during training was to make it to the starting line goal two was to make it to the finish line anything after that uh is is (laughs) after the 20th mile you can't just no uh it's i i learned like that someone mentioned emodium earlier like hey, i always took emodium before a race that was just you know, went without saying like you hoped you got a poop before then but god damn it you weren't getting one out until the next day after that um that yeah with um one thing that i you know heard a few times going into it was if you're going to take a painkiller before the race, because shit's just, you know, not doing well, uh, don't take uh, one of the NSAIDs that, you know, uh, don't take an NSAID like uh, ibuprofen or one of the other ones that's processed uh, by the kidneys, because you're going to be fucking your kidneys over good and hard uh, all day, uh, because you're, you know, because you're going to be processing all that water, all that salt. Um, And like, I was, um, like, at that time, I wasn't on, you know, I it's, was it? Hmm. I think by the, you know, I wasn't on, uh, uh, Indocin by like, I was already having my headaches when I was running, but I wasn't on Indocin on a daily basis, the prescription and said, uh, so it's, um, it's unclear. Like, I'm like, did I, did I, it's, it, it's unclear how I, it, how I would have managed that if it had been my daily med, because I don't know if I would have gotten through, um, like the, like once now that I know the level of headache, um, uh, relief I have with it. I don't know how I would have done without it. Um, let's see, my understanding is a lot of NFL players, um, let's see from Kiko, a lot of NFL players were given narcotics for pain by their team doctors and got addicted. It's, I, like, I always, I, I always try to err on the side of, you know, double, like, I probably want to look into that. It sounds, it rings true though. And I don't say like, it's, I want to be clear, like, I'm not blaming a single, you know, player for this, like, they, their bodies got used, abused, uh, for our entertainment in a sport that is extraordinarily violent and rough, um, and they, uh, got fucked out of this, they, they have, uh, you know, they, they have, uh, brain trauma, they have, uh, you know, they, uh, it's, uh, uh, and I'm not sure what the stats are, because I'd seen one thing uh, suggesting that, uh, chronic traumatic encephalitis thank you is it encephalitis or encephalopathy i'm not sure um but cte um where you know just the constant uh, concussions um or you know not even concussions but the chronic um trauma uh from their heads rattling inside of their uh you know from their brain hitting the inside of their skull uh alone um is is enough to cause uh you know various kinds of brain injuries now i've seen uh i've seen a couple of reports that suggest that the, you know, the main doctor that was, um, that, that's been pushing, uh, the issue of CTE has overblown the statistics on it, but I'm not sure, uh, if like, I, I want to double check that because it seems, it seems to ring fucking true. Um, and I'm like, it's just, it's that thing where you, like, I, it's hard to know if we get it pointed out to us when a former footballer has head injuries. Um, and we just, you know, it's like, we wouldn't know it if it was, uh, Joe, the guy that works at the grocery store. Um, and because like, we just, you know, we have it pointed out this person's in the public eye, but people do get, um, you know, uh, Alzheimer's and, uh, for, and various kinds of, um, of, uh, neurodegeneration all the time. Uh, but no, you're, it's, I'm not sure. It's, it's like, it's her, here's the question. Is Herschel Walker suffering from CTE or is he just a fucking idiot? I don't know. 
ask one of his 27 children. I know. Saying his 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 son's TikTok is just mm, chef's kiss. But see if they're not getting beaten up playing, they weren't making money for the so yeah. It was so I'm no there that there are a few questions in there that might like like as we're going through here i'm like i'm going i'm going back through this later and and just like mining some of the questions in here for articles but i'm i probably i should probably uh um cover uh cte at some point uh why not but yeah no exactly exactly um let's see remember most of these players were college athletes most of these players started getting um started getting concussions uh when they were uh in high school maybe even younger than that like i know um i want to be clear i am not at all uh saying that uh, not not even a smidge saying that the sports i played which were volleyball <laughs> and basketball i'm not saying these are anywhere near as uh but like i got myself a pretty solid concussion playing volleyball in high school uh and i'm still like what has that done to my brain and it was one one concussion i of course, like it's it's why i'm curious. like when i saw someone trying to um when i saw uh, some suggestions that uh the original study on ct was overblown i'm like i'm like but but really, is it because it feels like anything you do to a brain when it's younger, when it's developing, uh, is going to have huge repercussions uh, later on. So how many uh, concussions and how many minor, like never mind concussions, but how many bangs? How many times does that does that like? And your your brain, it's it's such a, it's a little bit of jelly. It's a it's a, it's shaped like a walnut and it's a big old sack of jelly. Just wood 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 wood. Um, can't objectify yourself how the see I, if you can't objectify yourself how the hell are you going to objectify someone i'm not sure if that's i'm i i i i need i need some clarification on what you need me, mean there beck pat i i can i can object myself i can i can objectify myself plenty and i plan to later uh beyond three pound bag of gel that is us Just gonna scroll up a little bit but yeah there's three pound yeah it's we're just our brains are just a big old sack of jelly um and that's uh no that that's uh that's what what it comes down to and it's very easy for it to get little bitty micro micro bumps here and there that you know add up to much bigger ones so over time um that's it's not surprising that a bunch of of bangs over the course of a lifetime are going to add up football is definitely forbidden for my kids over um Although my oldest likes surfing, there's a risk of there's a risk of sea monsters with that. That might it's we we might we, it's say thank I I appreciate the callback to my column from earlier this week. This might be where we should start just start wrapping like this up. I'm wrapping it up soon. Interesting thing is they didn't hit that hard before helmets came in, and that's it's I I enjoy I like this point, and that's this is one of those. Um, this is one of those questions of like, does it make it better to have protection uh, that like, is it just, does the protection make people go, oh, I can hit as hard as I can, uh, or does it protect people from a hard hit that's going to be coming anyway, because players have gotten bigger, stronger, they have like, the, the way the players train now uh, to be, uh, you know, built like a, a fucking bridge uh, are like, you know, and it's there. I, I feel like there's going to be um, it's, you know, rugby there. I don't I don't know. I haven't looked into if rugby has different concussion stats, uh, but I that's something I'd want to look into. Um, it's but does rugby, do they work? I feel like this is a dumb question. So somebody in the audience can. Um, like they don't let's see the older leather helmets huh i mean well there's a good question like here i think this question has two uh um provisional answers to it the older leather helmets wonder how many brain injuries went out oh, right. went undiagnosed and those were in use no it's the question is like and, and i think uh you know when i saw this um i i misread the question when i saw it in there um now i i wonder um, like it's, I think there's a part of this question that, that goes unsaid, that is, were there more brain injuries in, uh, leather helmets than there were in modern helmets? I, and I know that you didn't ask that, but I feel like that's part of, thank you for, uh, answering the, uh, no helmets in rugby. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, now I, I think, you know, part of this is, uh, you know, were there more injuries or less? And 
that's uh, because, you know, we don't, we didn't have, um, as Ryan's pointing out, uh, we, we didn't have, uh, thankfully the Beatles gave us CG technology. What, what would we have done without Ringo, obviously? Uh, but, you know, it's like, we're more or less, we, uh, it, it's, it's hard to know partially because, you know, were, were leather helmets better protection or worse? We don't know. Were they, were they hitting less hard because they knew there was, because they thought there was less protection or did they not think there was less protection? We'll never know. Um, it's, and was it, thank you for coming Harley and I appreciated the question. Um, it's like, well, you know, there was a lot that's hard to know. And like, what were, what was the rate of, um, of dementia in the older players? And I like, has someone, I'm going to poke around and see if I can, uh, hunt for like this, if, it might not be an article tomorrow, but I'm probably going to dig into CTE for next week um, because like this is Doug, I, like either that or I'm going to start on it tomorrow and be like, guys, it's going to take me the next week and we'll pop on here for another live stream. Uh, the, the live stream today was because too much shit went wrong and this is what we ended up doing. And I figured this was, you know, I like look on a day when I can, when things have gone well, when like what, when things when everything goes according to plan, I have an article out for you by 6 p.m. When things have gone a little slow, article out for you by 8 p.m. When I have the energy and things have, things are okay-ish enough to plop down and have a stream, which I'm overdue on, and I will almost certainly have another one um, this weekend uh, for patrons. So if you're not one of, if you aren't patronizing me, if you haven't, if you're not one of my patrons yet, you should head on over to patreon.com slash scibabe where there's there's bonus content. There's extra little quips and quirks along with most of my of my articles. There's uh it's and there's also there's also patron live streams. So it's also if you don't if Patreon's not your thing, if you wanna if you want if you're if you love my dog and pony show and you just wanna help support it any way you can, you know, for things like vaccines and vet bills and a divorce lawyer, because my life has been living it. it might, it's been a hard, it's been a hard go there for, for a little, for a little fucking while. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of like links down below. You, there's an Amazon, but look, look, there's along with Patreon, which, but I, I look, I like being supported with money. Money works for me. If you don't want to join a Patreon, my PayPal is down there too. There's also my Amazon wish list where there's, look, you can get little, there are little signs in there that I can put up in my bathroom that says your butt napkins, my lady. Uh, and I always appreciate having like four of those in my bathroom. So, uh, but, oh yes. And we also, um, so there, there are a handful of different ways you can support my weirdness here and I appreciate them all. Um, you, it's, I, um, uh, let's see also as, uh, as Dan Keeling has pointed out and we should, you know, I, I think we're a little bit overdue. Uh, so this, uh, this Saturday, um, I'm, I'm, t I'm tenant, I'm throwing a dart at it. I'm tentatively, uh, for noon Pacific, um, like, you know, in, unless I wake up and the Rona has infected me or, you know, the cat has, has vomited on me again in my sleep as happened two nights this week. Kitty is having a good week this week. If she doesn't kill me in my sleep, it'll be a good Saturday. Um, but yeah, uh, Saturday we are going, we are going for it. Saturday. We are going to do, uh, um, our, uh, a bit of a, it's, we're going to do some, our, a patron only live stream. Uh, and of course, if you join Patreon, Patreon costs, I mean, I know, I know you want, I know you want to get me, but but I understand we were all on budgets. Oh, my my roommate is is in the WGA. She's in the Writers Guild. She's a she's she's a fancy pants Hollywood writer. Um, and she uh, is on strike right now. I'm going and uh, picketing uh, once a week with her. Next week we're going to a prom themed picket. How crazy is that? Uh, but uh, it only costs uh, to support my dog and pony show here on Patreon and get the moment of science delivered to your inbox uh, every weekday. It costs it costs never mind a dollar. You can, if you pay for the whole year up front, it costs, it, co it costs 90 cents, a, 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 it costs $10.80 gets, gets me straight to your inbox every weekday and, and bonus content and extra. You get to be a part, to, never mind 11 a year, 1080 a year. Yes. Oh, I'm such a cheap date. Don't you love it? Uh, but come be a part of the party. Come join patriotic, patriotic prank calling and if you have a senator that you would like me to leave mm, a very polite message as part of our duty as americans or if you know you're in australia i have a long distance plan 
we could make that shit happen. Just, I'm just saying, I'm not picky. I will call Pauline Hansen for you. Only if her name is Van Battle, though. Anyways, uh, that is a that's a fun thing we're doing on there. Also, there's a, as Akiko points out, my one of one of my favorite things. Of, like I have I have an Amazon wish list. I haven't updated it for a bit, but like there's there's stuff on there. Send me there there are neat things that are that like look this is this is one of the most recent things someone sent me from in there. Humping animals, an adult coloring book. You you guys are too much, and I love you all. Uh, anyways, um, it's we oh we it's, you know I feel like whenever the one the one thing that makes you sad um, would love to uh, to see some of your writing compiled into a book. Uh, I just um, now this is this is something that has been in the works for a bit. It's been basically it's been planned on since you know the day I started writing a column. It's just you know there are there are things that are making it take a little longer right now and I will get into that eventually, but it's, I appreciate it. It will definitely be out there. Uh, and I'm not, I want to be clear. I love James and I love Lisa and I'm not out there to compete with them. We are out there to lift each other up. Uh, it's James is, is my, my, my James is, James is my boy. Uh, he's been my writer buddy since day one. Uh, and I'm so proud of him and happy for him, uh, with all the success he's had, uh, with sweary history, uh, with our, uh, this day in history shit went down. Uh, it's, and he's been, uh, he's been my, like, while I've been going through, uh, hell the last few years and like, uh, he's, he has been my, he, it's, I'm going to cry. <laughs> he's, he's been great. Uh, anyways, but yeah, we're not, we are not there to compete. We are here to support each other. Anyways, uh, whew, it's howdy, it's howdy gummy time. It's, 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 it's howdy vape time. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So, but, uh, hold on a second. Gotta wait till the last second for me to like to remember that the human being and I'm gonna cry in here. But yeah, like let's let's uh, let's 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 not let's let's not talk about a very un-Canadian Canadian author. Hey, hey, uh, I'm just it's oh sh constructive peer constructive peer pressure. But now we'll get it. Very un-Canadian Canadian author. Hey, hey, I'm just I'm just I'm just saying. Um, I am, I, I am half Canadian kind. Like, look, my mom is just the, like, look, I know normally, I know it's a rude term. I know it is. My mom was a Canadian, was an accidental Canadian anchor baby. I, she, look, she was, her parents were landed immigrants and all in the U.S., but like, she, I'm an Acadian author. I'm, look, I'm a I'm a Cajun Jew. I I've got a can Jew attitude. <laughs> That's like technically. So the way I explain the Acadians is that they're they're the Canadian Cajuns. They're the ones that like after the Brits deported us, we went back. Uh, so I'm I, I'm uh, about it's as I, I like to say, James is my uh, is is my uh, is my brother from a a only slightly Canadian -ier mother. Uh, so anyways, no, he's my bro. He messaged me. I feel bad. He messaged me two days ago and I keep on meaning to send him a message back. Uh, he messaged me asking, um, it's, hold on a second. I think, you know what, we're going to, we're, we're going to do a thing. I want to, I want you guys to I just, I'm sending you guys on a mission. Um, he, James asked, uh, if my address was still my address, it is. And he said, can I send you some cheesies? Um, can you guys, uh, I'm just going to ask, go to James Fell's page and just his most recent post, whatever the fuck it is, uh, just, just post, Cybabe says, send the cheesies. <laughs> We're having a day. Uh, anyways, uh, Cybabe, yeah, just tell him Cybabe says, <laughs> Jesus. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him where, from whence this came. No, it's, look, we have, it's a long running thing with the cheesies. Like I have, look, uh, uh, my, my go-to candy bar in in Canadian land uh, is um, has long been the crunchy bar. That top that puff toffee uh, is is my it's it it makes my heart melt, but mostly my mouth makes the puff toffee melt. Um, and after that uh, is is the arrow bars. I do love those. Um, and also when I live, look, I know the name sounds problematic because it is. But when I lived in England, 
the little candies called minstrels. Like I said, it's a problematic name, but they're basically like giant M&Ms. They're like, have you seen Hershey's Drops? They're like those, but with good chocolate because they're made by Cadbury. Um, but like the name is not exactly like, I'm just saying someone's going to yell at me for saying they're, you know, they're, look, they're fucking delicious. And the name is not uh, okay. Uh, anyways, but yeah, that's one of, uh, I have like from having a Canadian family and living in England for a year, I have a bunch of, um, of British year candies that I, I love and miss. But the thing with, somehow it started up as a thing with with the cheesies and now um james will randomly send me a box of cheesies uh because he's a wonderful he's a james is a very good human anyways uh let's see propaganda is by far canada's best friend i haven't heard of him highly propaganda propagandi i it's i i'll look into it they just it i have a joke that's probably far longer than i have the capability to do the thinking out on on the fly uh but I'll try to have it ready for next time regarding that. Um, let's see. You're talking about candy, not stage shows here. Fair, fair. Uh, let's see. Hello, what were we discussing? You know, somehow we landed on candy, and I think it was just telling people, go to, go to my Amazon wish list, get me, get me things. I'm not picky. Just get anything on the list. Get anything, get anything on the list. <laughs> it's, it, that's, anyways, you guys are great. Uh, I love you. We have to do, we have to fulfill one I just, I wish I had, I, I need like a breath mint or something just so I can. Okay. I think we've done everything we need to do today. Uh, anyways, uh, it's, are they called it because the chocolate center, uh, it's, they are, it is one giant drop of chocolate and it's fucking delicious. Um, anyways, I love you guys. Thank you for joining me for what was, uh, cheat. It's spelled with a Z. Um, they are, they're Hawkins cheesies and they're, they're wonderful. Oh, there are some, some folks, there's some folks that are like, we have not, we were not told there would be a lick. Um, look during, we held ongoing trials during the pandemic, which is not over. I know whatever. Um, we held ongoing trials during the pandemic to see if we could pass this virus through the computer. Didn't seem to work, but you know, I'm still trying to, I'm I'm still trying to spread a little, spread a little joy, positivity, moisture, horror through the uh, through the screen, and it seems to be seems to be working. Anyways, I love you too, Akiko. Um, I love you guys. Uh, I will see you next time. Um, if I don't hop on here tomorrow, because well, I I probably I don't know. I'll probably think this is a bad idea tomorrow, uh, because my you know cat almost became dinner. Uh, let's see. I caused a COVID spike with my computer. Michael. Let's see. Anyways, uh, you guys are wonderful. Uh, please subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, or just you know again, can send. I I accept PayPal, Amazon wish list to just. Anyways. Or just, you know, show show love by telling a friend to subscribe to my page. Just tell them to click like on Psybe. They won't tell, tell them I tell dick jokes with a side of like orca piss or whatever. It's, it'll be a good time. Anyways, I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.